To in game chat for Saturday, October 4th, 2014. This is season 8, episode 40. I'm Scott. I'm James. I'm Dennis. I'm RJ. I'm Nathan. All right, welcome to the show, everybody. If you would like to get in touch with us, our phone number is 334 272 9228. 334 272 9228. Talk to Nathan. And then you can talk to us, or you can just talk to Nathan. He's, he's fun to talk to. He's all right. I don't bite. No. He's all right. <laughs> Check out ingamechat.net for all the links to get in touch with us. By the way, good job on our Facebook page. Uh, Nathan yeah, is... I'm trying. Uh, what are you now, our social media guy? Yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah. Our Facebook guy. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at ingamechat as well as on Facebook. You can email us, everyone, at ingamechat.net. I'm going to jump into emails because we it's been a long time since we've done those. Uh, we're streaming the cam feed right now through twitch.tv. Head over there. And look for in-game chat, and then you can find us, you can watch us. We're doing the double cams again. And uh, you can join in the chat room, live while we broadcast, and probably change the conversation if you'd like. But anyway, welcome to the show. Um, I want to thank, real quick, Daniel Phelps, uh, who has emailed us quite a few times, and we just keep forgetting to go back and read his emails. Um, but yeah, Daniel, thanks for writing us. Uh, we do need to get to your emails and, and, and read them, and I will set aside some time for us to do that. Um, in fact, maybe in the last segment, maybe during the interview, um, a little bit later on tonight, we'll do that. And speaking of that interview, coming up at 7 o'clock, the top of the second hour there, we've got an interview with, and I'm going to mess up her last name, but Olga Rishko from Frog Frogwares about Sherlock Holmes' crimes and punishments. Uh, we did this earlier in the week. And uh, we've got an interview with them, or with her, uh, talking about that coming up at the top of the second hour, 7 o'clock. So stick around for that. Really interesting interview. Uh, Frogwares is a company that is based out of Kiev uh, in the Ukraine that has been in the news earlier this year and dominated the news for quite some time about the stuff that's going on over there. And we, we talked to her a little bit about that and how it is working uh, in that environment. So a uh, really good interview, really kind of changes, uh, sort of changes the way you look at a, at a company like that. Frogwares has done nothing but, uh, well, they've done other games, but Sherlock series has been their, their calling card, basically. It's been their thing that they've done. <clears throat> and you really don't hear them much outside of that. And Sherlock's not really a AAA title type s sort of situation. So you might think, ah, it's small studio, don't give them much thought. But what they had to go through and, and what they did to go through that and how they dealt with it uh, is an interesting story. and kind of gives me uh, a different viewpoint uh, of them and what they do. So that's coming up in the second hour. But uh, this first hour, we're going to talk about games. I'm going to go straight to Dennis because the man hit a milestone uh, over the week, and I wish he was streaming it, but he didn't. No, it, it was just a complete chance. I finally did 100% uh, Binding of Isaac on their achievements. The last one I needed was a no damage run through uh, the third set of uh, levels, essentially. And uh, one of the things is the the set, you, what you have to do is beat the uh, both bosses in in that particular set in order to get the achievement to count. Uh, the last boss of, of the uh, third set of worlds there, if you get a certain item, it's an insta-kill on them. And, like, I got through the first one with no damage, and I was like, okay, I've, you're good. And then I just happened to get that pickup right before I enter into the next level. And I was like, I actually stand a chance, depending if I can reach the boss and actually get, uh, get there before I get to a room where I just can't help but take damage. Mm -hmm. But I managed to pull it off, finally got that done, so I, in a month I'm good for rebirth, and... I don't need to worry about uh, trying to 100% that now. So many attempts did it take for you to get that? Oh, 
uh, countless lots. Just it, <laughs> we'd have probably gotten, know for we'd sure. Have probably gotten a subscriber for every attempt he made. <laughs> Subscribe for every four letter word I utter over the Twitch well, stream. Well, <laughs> I don't know if we got enough of that, but yeah, because I'm sure there was a lot. Oh, it, it was it was just you made up new ones, didn't you? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I, I have several colorful metaphors in my language now. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was just lots uh, at least n- probably not quite in triple digits just gunning for this particular achievement the number of times i just played isaac just because are way up there but going just for this specific one i'd say probably at, at least 30 easily but yeah i did that got through that i'm good aside from that been playing more kingdom loathing and uh getting into crawl again they did an update a couple weeks ago that that it's new uh, items and new monsters to the game, so I've been enjoying that as well. All right, so <clears throat> when I ask you next, when I ask you at the end of the show what you're going to be playing next week, you're not going to be Binding of Isaac then, right? It's not going to be that. When that does, would be a lie, because I will probably play some more Isaac just because it's a fun game to play. Okay, when is Rebirth? November? November 4th. All right. Uh, RJ, over to you. Oh, um, slide that mic over. All right. I played a lot of... Uh, older titles uh this week including uh um as well as dark souls as well uh found the new dlc uh search for the ivory king tried going through that uh the previous one uh, search for the throne of the uh, crown of the iron king a lot of fire involved in that one and this one involves a lot of ice so Pause. yeah dark souls 2 <laughs> yeah is what we're talking about yeah you're on dark souls so this is the new dlc yeah the okay. newest dlc mm-hmm. um, what's the king made of uh this is the ivory king ivory. i believe mm-hmm. and the last one was iron iron king Okay, I don't know. I have to, like. Uh, I don't know. You start talking first, as if like. Yeah, because the first one was everyone sunken. else is as cool as you. The sunken, sunken king. king. Okay. Yeah, the sunken king. Yeah. <laughs> so sunken iron so and now sunken, ivory. Sunken king. sunken king, iron king, ivory king. He's made of sunken. Uh, something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, uh, I basically an ice based level. Um, a lot of uh, uh, snowstorms. Can't see. Uh, while seeing is difficult. You know your um, your equipment starts to frost over. Um, oh really? Is that yeah. kind of, is it like I'm not sure cause damage to it? No, I don't think it causes damage to it. At least I haven't noticed it. But uh, it was like maybe it's just cosmetic. But it was a nice touch. I thought hmm. uh, going through that. Uh, like I said, visibility is an issue. Uh, try to get a little far into it. The enemies are pretty. As, as with all the DLC in the Dark Souls 2, the enemies are a lot tougher this time around. Especially for the first DLC with Sunken King. Um, a lot of uh, traversing through mazes and whatnot, trying to get through real difficult types of enemies in. Uh, in all three of them. So, all three of them, really. Sorry to jump in again. Yeah. Okay. So you've got uh, Dark Souls 2's got like a... Um, when they add the DLC, it's not... Is it is it level increased or, or is it just like a soft difficulty increase that the enemies have? Are they of like a certain... Well, are no they of a certain level that makes them harder? No, I don't think the level... the base ma- game or is it just... Uh, it's just extra stuff to go through, and the difficulty in and of itself, I think, personally, is a little more difficult than the main right. game itself. Right, what increases yeah. the, di- uh, what I'm saying is, what increases the difficulty? Is it just inherently uh, harder, is because it's... Harder, le- I mean, harder level design, searching through a lot of things, uh, having to go through a lot of things to open stuff up, you know, you have to go backtrack to this place to get this item to open this thing up. Right. Um, but nothing is like... smarter. Um, uh, you don't have to progress through the DLCs, right? They're all uh, kind of they stand alone. This isn't like a progressive additive thing. Yeah, uh, I think it's standalone because uh, you can still go through the entire game uh, yeah, without touching any of the DLCs. Because that was the case with the uh, one from Dark Souls One, uh, uh, the Abyss DLC. The Abyss DLC. Um, yeah, but you could go to like to you could go fight like the you, could, yeah. you could go like fight the Ivory King and not the Iron King. Yeah, like you, you could do, do the Ivory yeah. King DLC without having done any of the other DLCs. Yes, as far as I know, it's and all it doesn't optional. care. It's all optional. Uh, no, I mean, I understand yeah. optional. What I'm trying to get at is if uh, you got the base game, yeah. right? Because in a lot of games, you got the base game. Right. Then you have the DLC, mm-hmm. and in an RPG or a level based type of game, it's usually making an effort to build the difficulty and the progression off of the base game so that you have mm-hmm. an increase uh, in that difficulty or something, either by level or by uh, 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 weapon and armor and damage statistics mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times, the DLC, or I guess in, in olden times, uh, expansion packs and DLC would be well. I mean, they would, man. It would, and it is old in time. No, Let's I not understand. Like I understand. It isn't. I understand. Um, Just gave me. They a would chuckle. be sort of progressive, where one thing would build on top of the other. You know, right? And um, that's certainly the case in an MMO style of. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so like it, for these DLCs, it's not like you have to beat Dark Souls two and then you can do these. Could you like 
as you progress through the story, be like, as okay, you, let me go as, do the yeah, sunken okay. cave. As you progress through it, you, it's uh, it's optional. You know, there's a, a little uh, shrine or something you can go to. Uh, I think there's one in the um, the Black Gulch that leads you to the Sunken King. Uh, the one for the Iron King is in um, the. Uh, I'm trying to remember the level. It's the Iron some some Iron Cast Iron Castle or whatever. You have to go there, and then the Winter Shrine of Winter near the tail end before you get to Drang Lake Castle. That's where you go for the uh, Ivory King. So okay. it's like, while you're there, if you want to go through it, have at it. But you don't have to. But uh, in terms of difficulty, it, uh, in terms of difficulty, I think the three DLCs are a little little more difficult than the uh, main game in, in and of itself. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, a um, little bit here and there. Played a little bit more Five Nights at Freddy's. Uh, tried, a little, tried my hand at some more uh, Fantasy Star Online 2. Um, then I started playing some older games. I played a lot of played a lot of Daytona USA on the Dreamcast. Hmm. Uh, new courses, new tracks, and things like that. And uh, then I, for kicks, I just picked up uh, SSX again. See how many uh, records I uh, saw you playing couldn't get, that. Couldn't uh, <laughs> get through. I made made some progress, beat some records, but by the time anyone Which, else sees uh, SSX, was that the the revamp that they did towards the uh, towards the end of the generation last yeah, year? Uh, 2012, okay, th- yeah, two thousand twelve. Okay, the one two thousand twelve version. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, had fun with that, and uh, that's pretty much what I've been uh, playing mostly. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, slide that mic over to Nathan real quick because he's played stuff other than Destiny. I have. Um, so go over. Yeah, what have you played? Um, Destiny. No. Uh, <laughs> um, right. Yeah. I have played that, um, and then I was playing last night uh, Shadows of Mordor, um, which came out, and we were playing it on PC. Me and my friend. That's a funny thing about that game. We're playing Destiny. And we got people that play Destiny, but they'll stop playing Destiny and stay in the chat room and just fire up. Mordor and play that while James and I are still playing Destiny. Right. And, you know, they'll tell us about the stuff going on. And all we ever hear is like, you guys, you guys playing this yet? No. Nope. Oh, you really should. It's so good. So it, good. It and is, I don't doubt that. It's very fun. Yeah. I don't doubt that. Um, I, I definitely plan on getting it eventually because um, I could play it on his computer anytime I want. Um, but I, it, it's very fun. Uh, it, it definitely brings back the old days of... Um, I don't, did you guys ever play The Lord of the Rings on PlayStation 2? No. You know, nope. play the console? I never did. Okay, well, me and my friend, we used to co-op that game. It was probably one of my favorite co-op games besides Halo 2. Um, we played that game for hours, and uh, it, it, it brought back that memory of Lord of the Rings style, just, you know, um, fighting hordes of mobs, you know, coming at you. Uh, but it... it it's very unique. I'll say it's the first time I've, I've ever had the experience of where I was fighting, you know, the uh, captains, and one popped up, and I was like, okay, I can handle him, and he was shooting boat, uh, you know, arrows at me that were exploding and knocking out other enemies for me. I was like, okay, I got this, and all of a sudden, this other guy came up to me. And he's got a big old shield. You know, it does the whole little intro. You, you, you right? Yeah, you no, no. the whole little intro. They do it. They do this. Um, it was like a wrestler thing. Yeah, yeah kind of. Right? Uh-huh. Where it's like and a, a wrestler like theme intro or something. Does he have his own music or is it just. No, no, no. no music, It's like, more like Roadrunner? When it's they would, more like Roadrunner. Like they would pause they on the. Like ca- a sign? No, they pause on like the character and then they, you know, give a description of him. And then oh, there's a pop up like Orcus Maximus underneath it or something. Yeah, he'll <laughs> say his name and then he'll do his little trash right, talk. Like, like, yeah. And he gets, like a, he gets like a title. They always have some. <laughs> one of the ones that Squish found was like. Uh, was it, it Morak? No, it, uh, it was Star Stealer. Yeah, one, I think. Uh, Blake found it. Yeah, he's, he's like like Morak the literate. The literate, right? This guy, <laughs> like, yeah. This this was the I'm thing. I'm sold. That's his calling. This was the thing for which he was a champion amongst his people. <laughs> it is the one thing that set him apart from from the rest of his race. Was that well, he could I, actually the, read the, to some extent. The one I kept dealing with, he was drunk, and so like he kept trying to uh. like trash talk, and he, he was like, "I d- we're gonna." I'll just kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <It's like once>. <laughs> <laughs> is there some kind of uh, like is there is there a fixed like is everybody going to run into like Mudmug the literate or yeah. like Bob the drunk? Yeah, or I was whatever? wondering that same thing. Or is I there like a- some larger pool? Of well, who was it that we said? Who was I know, we I know to? there was there was one character in the. Somebody said the dialogue was not repeat. They had gone through a lot yeah, and they hadn't uh, heard it, any repeating dialogue. Right. Uh, I think that was featured in a couple of the reviews. Yeah. actually. We very played, specifically. We played for about four hours, um, and then. Because what happens is, is, you know, you have the captains. If you kill a captain or a little guy kills you, he can kill a captain and move up. So it can be a little nobody that can move up. Oh, right. So he gets like he, he gets be, like he a little bit of juice type. if he kills you. Yeah, and then it, so that sort then, of changes the arrangement of, exactly. of so, the, the table of organization, if you will, so of, you can, of the org. You could be wanting to kill a captain organization. and technically someone else could kill him before you ever kill him. 
one one of the other little guys that move up that kill you. One of the other like orcs. little peon, yeah. Oh, they does it count? Up. Like, does it count if like the peon gets like just like the last yeah. little bit, like come over and just just like fk, yep. and takes off your last two points? Like, what happens? Is, well, geez, this is happen. so the, the very fir- <laughs> the very first time I'm playing, okay, I'm dealing with one captain, think I can handle. Then another one comes in, then his little group of people come and attack me. So I'm like, you know, it's probably about seven on one. Then another guy comes, and then so it's eight. And then another guy comes, he brings his group of people, so now it's about 15 around me. Right. Then another captain comes, then another, or so I, it's probably about one on 29, 30, and they just cl- completely annihilated me. Well, the guy who kills me, who was a captain shooting arrows, he got two ranks up. All the other guys, all the other um, five captains who were there and survived, they all got a rank up. So I wasn't even trying to fight them. And all these captains are all getting ranks on me. <laughs> I haven't. And we just started the game. This is the very first encounter. Trying I'm, to do so the I'm very assuming, first mission. Uh, I'm assuming there's some mechanic uh, because we all, I think, understand. Uh, and this is not spoilers. I don't believe. Uh, I, I think we all understand that. Like your character is not entirely just like a guy. He's not just like I'm. I am guy with sword and knife and bow, and I kill. Like he is. I mean, the story. He's got like wraith abilities he's got sort of spectral yeah. otherworldly abilities that sort of lay right into the whole lord of the rings yeah exactly right um. so so his death what i'm guessing is how the game handles death is not like oh you get a reload screen and mm-hmm. it's all that it's like well, you die and it's like oh it turns out you're not like a yeah, real dude uh, there, there were like videos of being like didn't i already kill you when you like run into a right so that's into? that's kind of what i was understanding his death is actually a part of the evolving experience exactly, it yeah. is not ignored or handled by a load screen he mm-hmm. is simply resurrected uh and he gets back to work i, I forget how the guy I'll, I'll look it up here in a minute but there's a phrase um in the very beginning of the game he's like death is not your option he says uh, okay. something like, quote i forget the quote but i'll yeah. look it up okay yeah. he implies that you can't well but that actually makes the entire uh reshuffling of the orc organization make sense mm-hmm. when you exactly. die all right um so like basically you're their loot pinata or experience pinata right, in this right. case. Technically, yeah. Um, and and the, when when you uh, first play, I, um, we were talking about this before the show. I do not recommend doing the side missions right away. Get get some of your um, runes for your weapon and get some of your skills up because. Yeah, because I, I, I listened to somebody talking about this, and they yeah. said they the natural instinct of RPGs is mm-hmm. it, oh, I could go do go there. do side quests because that's well, because they're supposed to be supplementary to your yeah. ability to handle. And it's the supposed main to be quest. this. This is this is what levels me up to handle the main thing. But it's like the exact opposite, from what I understand, is you yeah. want to do the main ones because that's where your power sets are. No, you no, don't not do the side quest. Yeah. Just get a little higher than that. No, no, no. But what, they 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 change. I guess the understanding is there. It's a different priority system mm-hmm, for how exactly. to handle things that would offer you XP. Uh, uh, or upgrade paths. Because there, there was a uh, side mission where you take out a uh, one of the leaders or whatever, and you know he's got heavy armor with a shield, and you, it was like a side objective, kill all of his guys and then get him alone. I'm like, okay, I got this. So I kill, arrowed all of his guys, and it's just one-on-one, so we're fighting, we're fighting. <clears throat> and then out of nowhere, there's a group of orcs, probably about ten, and I sent you guys the screenshot. Yeah, of we it. saw that. Yeah. Yeah. They all came out of nowhere and started attacking me, and then like three more guys came, and I just I was like, oh, this is... A fail already. Yeah, you can't get into a group fight in this thing. No, I, I, you I, can't. Which I is awesome that, because yeah. you know it's realistic well, like, to a degree. You know, you know, one of the things that one of the things that Assassin's Creed gets wrong is the fact that you you never feel threatened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think Batman's the same way. Yeah, uh, it is. You, you know, I, there, there's even that mode in Batman, the one versus one hundred. Mm-hmm. Never feel threatened. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and there are moments you can do that. Where you don't feel threatened when mm-hmm. you're just running around and killing, you can get pull a whole bunch of horde of little guys, and it'll feel just like Batman. And the combat's just like Batman. If you're if you enjoyed Batman's combat, it's the exact same thing, and it's very fun. But it is like when when they start getting ranks up, that's when it starts getting more difficult. Yeah, um, because they they can because uh, pending the one captain can have up to like six or seven guys with him. So you can just get overrun in like two seconds. Is, is it is it kind of is it kind of like in Batman where it's like, well, I have to flip over them first before I can attack them or something uh, like that. The one there is the, a lot of that move I remember seeing. There there is the but vault th- move, but that won't only help you so much because they'll still gain up on you to where you're trying to vault. As soon as you vault, bam, someone is already going to hit you. Like oh, it's not where Batman's going. You know, Batman they'll kind of hesitate. They just they'll yeah. They, they, you. It's not like they're like, oh, it's just one on one until I get a chance to attack. Yeah, it's like no, it, they'll it, just swarm you no matter can. what. Mm-hmm. Nice, I like the it, sound it, of that. It's very 
realistic air quotes, you know, in that sense. That Authentic. Yes, exactly. exactly. Banished from death, by the way. Thank you, Callie yes. Synth. Banished from death is the phrase. So, there you go. It's already written out. Banished from death. Don't have to die. Which is excellent. a good way to put well, it. Well, it's an excellent subversion yeah. of the mechanic. Mm -hmm. You know? You still have the fail state, uh, but it doesn't require you to, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it doesn't require you to fall back through the fourth wall exactly. in order to maintain it. So, But, um, yeah, it, I've been, I'd recommend renting it if you have. I've, you know, and here's, hmm. Here's the thing. I have gone out of my way to watch uh, samples, right, uh, of uh, gameplay from a number of different places. I've looked at recorded videos. I've looked at live streams. I've listened to people talk about it. I will tell you this. Watching it doesn't do much for me. I look at it, and I'm like, yeah, it's like Sword Man with, like, you know, leather jerkin or whatever. And he's, like, running through the thing, and he's, like, killifying an orc. And, like, it's just, yeah, the environment looks fine, and the guy looks, I guess, whatever, okay. And the combat certainly seems... Fluid, I see the Batman. It's fine. It doesn't look bad, but I don't look at it and then lean in closer and think, what is, like, what is this? So what, what, what is he doing? I, whatever this is, I want to do that. I want to do whatever this game has going on. I don't see that. I simply look at it and think, okay, that's certainly fine. Looks great. Um, but I imagine it to be the kind of thing where... I imagine it to be more of a cerebral cell. Right, you look at the game and you think this is just this like a Lord of the Rings game where a guy's doing like swords and bows and that kind of stuff, and that's fine. But what really sells you, and I, th I think this is true with everybody that I've talked to, everyone I trust anyway, it's the it's the delivery of the idea, the concept of the systems that it's using, the Nemesis system mm -hmm. as it works and how it's supposedly applied in the game. That's intriguing. Watching the game to me is just does nothing for me whatsoever. But to hear so much from people mm -hmm. and to know, like, intellectually that it is doing stuff that we would all very much enjoy that no other game is doing uh, gets you in front of the game. And then once in front of the game, you're completely bitten by it. And, and it's definitely one of those games where each encounter is going to be unique just because yeah. of the situation right. that you'll get put in. Yeah, it, it seems like the just the Lord of the Rings backdrop is just kind of gravy on top of everything. Mm -hmm. it, this, that's what's supposed to get you in. And it seems like a really good setting to make all of those systems work correctly. Yes. To add that subversion of the death mechanic, um, to be able to give you the opportunity to play around with orcs that are not generic, with, uh, you don't you don't ever have to take the time to establish the world. And this is, you know, in an only somewhat related conversation, this is one of the good things about licensed video games, is that if if the licensing doesn't become, you know, a, a, a cinder block around your ankles, right? If it doesn't drag you down or, or slow down the entire game, it's a shortcut to not having to explain what's going on in the game world. You only have to concentrate on the specific mechanics of the game. Nobody needs an explanation for what's happening. It's Lord of the Rings. This guy's out there somewhere. There's, like, hobbits and elves and stuff and, like... Yeah, you already know what a hobbit stuff, and, and an orc like is. Sauron, and and there's rings happening somewhere or another. And it's all fine. I get it. It's great. Lord of the Rings. You can just concentrate Smeagol. on this guy. Do what? Don't forget Smeagol. And I'm, evidently that's happening as well, of course. So that's, like, really, really, really cool. Uh, and it gives you an opportunity to play around with everything that world has to offer. You know? Like, swords and knives and bows. Excellent. That happens. Magic, that happens. Weird orc things, that happens. Like, it's all super fantastic. But anyway, I wasn't trying to disparage the game at all. I just know that there are some games I look at, and they show well, right? They perform well to a passive observer, and they really draw you in, and, like, you know that I want to do that. Whatever that guy playing is doing, I want to be a part of that, and I want to see it. It's very compelling. This game, kind of, it's the recommendations and the understanding of the fact that what they're doing is incredibly cool and is somewhat unique, and then you actually get it, you actually sit down in front of it, and and that's where like that real compelling gameplay comes in. Well, I, I honestly didn't really have, not, not that I wasn't paying attention to it, but you know I just didn't really think much of it. Just you know, it's just another game that was coming out, but I, I definitely uh, definitely enjoyed it. No, it's good. I I had I have not. I don't know, like a dozen or so people that I know are playing it currently. Not a one of them has said, eh, <laughs> right. I, don't know. I mean, it's okay. Like, it's eh, it's okay. Nobody's nobody said that. Uh, which is strange, because the reviews have been sort of, you know, they're, they're largely positive, but there's several people that are like, eh, it's, 
Yeah, it's, it's great, it's, but it, you know, it only goes on for so and so. Yeah, Shadows of Mordor's gotten kind of a mix. Overall. Yeah, it has. Uh, but it's been outmixed. It, yes, it has been outmixed. It, it has been. We, Someone else has grabbed the throne of the yeah. mixed And we won't reviews. know about that for sure until next week. Yeah, we time. won't. <laughs> um, I like how uh, Callie Sin says part of the cool part of the Nemesis stuff is the, hey, I killed you. Well, this time I'm going to kill you harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, Zufu mentions the Nemesis system will probably be the new... Thing we that's talked about it. Everything. Somebody would, again. Uh, it's yeah. it's either Blake or, or Squish. It's, it's either Squish or, or Star Stealer that we talked about because they're the two on our friends list who are playing. They'll play it while we're playing Destiny. While yeah, we're playing Mordor while we're playing Destiny. They're the people having fun while we're <laughs> playing Destiny. <laughs> uh, mentioned something about hey, that would sound. This would work really well in Assassin's Creed if they did. Uh, I don't necessarily know if it was the Nemesis system. It may have been like a contract system. I'm not sure. Uh, but they mentioned some some part of that game. Yeah, would work I don't think well. it takes. I, I don't think that would be terribly hard to do. Right. You look at an excellent system that is already working in a game that has borrowed so much from your games, and you just you know you, you I don't know you grab some of the some of the cross pollination. You know, move that around. That's pretty good. It's a good. I like it. It's a good thing to be expected that uh, your game is going to be the thing to be copied from now going forward well because i never i always forget to do this i'm going to do it now i get a chat room roll call then we're going to go to break and then when we come back we're going to have more but uh going down the list here we got bgc monte cristo build 195 lavos is in the chat room duke frukum and we're going to get to destiny buddy i promise uh fat stuff is in there grazitz uh also john caldwell too cali synth kit the can't say it um <laughs> <laughs> plorch is in there squish W. Matthew Wolf, uh, 2554, and Zufu. Uh, we're going to come back with more in game chat in just a moment. Here is music from Metal Slug. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there it is. And welcome back to In Game Chats. That is music. Uh, that track is called Tyrion. Tyrion, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure what game that's from. Somebody in the chat room will jump in with that bit of trivia and let us know. I uh, want to talk about, just before we jump into it, um, a listener local here uh, named Leonard uh, Wheeland uh, came by the station earlier this week uh, specifically uh, to see me and to talk to us. Uh, in game chat, he is organizing an extra life uh, session for, I believe, October 25th when the extra life program kicks off. If you're not sure what extra life is, uh, it is basically uh, it's it's a charity for game uh, gaming. It's uh, Children's Miracle Network is who it benefits. Okay. So it's all for a very good cause. You play games, heal kids. That's their their uh, their tagline. Yeah, I, th I think I've seen like some marathons mm -hmm. that have been done uh, in their name. Yeah, he is, uh, it'll be October 25th for, you, for folks that are local. October 25th at Quality Comics, downtown Prattville, uh, is where he's going to be holding it. Uh, our friends, Retro Game Planet, they're going to be involved in this as well. And uh, he's, we're going to have him on the show the weekend before this to come in and tell more people about it. Uh, it but on the, I think that's the 18th, and then October 25th. Uh, it's completely free, of course, but they will, you know, obviously ask for donations. You come in, you, you lay down some money, and then you can play for as long as you want. Uh, you can play games for as long as you want. And he's done this before. They raised about $3,000 the last time they did this. Mm, nice. Uh, and they barely put any kind of effort into it when they did it the first time. And this time they're going all out. So uh, I hope it does well for them. And we'll, uh, we'll continue to talk about it each week leading up to it uh, to remind people locally. And for those of you who aren't local, uh, Extra Life, of course, is a worldwide thing. So, I yeah. posted the links in chat, but I'll also be posting them on the Facebook as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, so uh, definitely check that out. And I just wanted to give uh, a mention of that uh, for the folks local. And again, like I said, for everybody else, that that is coming. That's something that um, that we're possibly going to get involved with next year. It's a year out, so I don't, I don't want to talk too much about it because who knows if it will come to fruition. But uh, I'm going to try and do a big thing. Um, not sure how we're going to do it, but I'm going to try and do a big thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to the discussion. Uh, let's get some Destiny talk out of the way. Uh, I know Duke Frukum really wants chore, us to it? talk about some <laughs> Destiny stuff. Well, have you played it? Are you talking about the discussion <laughs> nope. or the game? Uh, we got our fix this week. Because it can be. Yeah, no, we didn't. We got a patch. We got our patch It sure doesn't week. feel like anything is fixed for me necessarily. <laughs> no. I have yet to see, to be fair, I have yet to see a legendary high-quality engram, uh, one of these unidentified objects uh, that you get that is some sort of piece of gear or loot or spendable currency. I have yet to see one turn into something that isn't legendary. Yeah. Because I've yet to see one. Because <laughs> you've yet to see a legendary. <laughs> <laughs> I, have th- I have not seen one drop. Uh, well, th- that, that was I legendary engram. The, the, originally it was... Yeah, they uh, would be legendary, but they could like drop lower quality? Yes. They or could th- drop all the way down to like essentially nothing that you would ever want to have that was worth any of your time whatsoever. But that was what they did was they made it so that the legendary engrams will now uh the the you know the the loot hierarchy, the gear hierarchy. Yeah. There's exotic uh which is um very rare. Then you have the legendary stuff which is your your baseline for high level play, right? Uh level 20 and above. That's really what you want to be building toward. Then you have the rare stuff, which is higher quality blue colored items, which can have uh, a larger number of secondary stats and affixes and properties on them. Then you have the green quality uh, uncommon stuff, which isn't very good at all. It's just mm-hmm. it's going to be your commodity gear uh, from level whatever all the way up to 20. And then you have like the white quality trash Which gear. is like just your right. merchant gear, essentially. Yeah, exactly. So... Uh, they, they made it so that the, the system was a little more predictable, but what it has done is it's kind of, uh, made the rate at which you acquire these things shake out a little bit more like what you would have expected, right? Legendary stuff will always turn out to be legendary stuff. Uh, but the rate at which you will see it in any form is much slower now. It's okay. It's not that big a deal. I'm griping about it, but it isn't that big a deal. Um, there are plenty of other things that are still a big deal, but yes, we did get that patch. I think it has helped people out a little bit. I think the randomness is still causing major problems. I was like, look, <laughs> I have 31 ascendant energy. There's ascendant energy and there's ascendant shards. Energy will upgrade your weapons, shards upgrade your gear. Guess which one I need to upgrade? My gear. Guess, <laughs> guess which thing I have? The thing for guns. Of co- I, have like th- I have like four times as many. Well, that's because you only have two guns. Or, yeah. Do what? Or you only have three guns, so you don't. No, less gun is, is no it's po- because is Destiny... It, no, it's because somebody put a, put a hex on me. Well, that's, that's, what, too, yeah. that's what it is. Is there a point where you just can't upgrade your guns anymore? They are the best gun? Uh, well, the, the reason this is more important for gear, mm-hmm. and the reason why I will actually try to justify my griping, is you hit level 20, right? Level 20 is a hard cap based on experience. Yeah. To level up past 20 requires that you get gear with a, with a property on it called Light. Right? Okay. And so your gear has light, and so you stack light, and that gives you extra levels, so to speak. Right? And th- that gives, does that give you, like, ec- the, as a consequence of that, do you get extra stats along uh, with that, or is it just, like, an eff- an eff- just an effective level thing? You're still kind of, like, level 20, but it's still... It, it actually is fairly complicated for them. For when mm. you're doing missions in PvE, this matters greatly. Uh, for example, you must be level 26 to participate in the raid at all. Um, for enemies lower level than you, it kind of doesn't matter. Damage gets normalized from you okay. to them. But for enemies higher level than you, you suffer a penalty oh, for every level okay. difference there is. So in order to kill higher level enemies, in order to challenge higher level content, you need to be able to push your level higher and higher. So, so the, so the uh, level... And the level itself is, is a mechanic, not just yes, it not is. just yes. a uh, exactly not just a uh, this is how many stats you have this level. This is right. Like it's more of a it's more of a uh, hit and resistance mechanic than it is okay. an actual damage mechanic. I think 
Uh, but anyway, the whole point is that content is gated based on your character's level, right? Whether that is a natural level or, or a light assisted level. Uh, that level, as you, you know, you get a weapon, right? Or you get an armor piece and it's got all these like little slots on it that you upgrade. The more you use the thing, the more it gains experience, you know? You gain experience that doesn't transfer to your level. It transfers to the level of whatever gear or weapon you're using. That thing levels up, it gets better. When armor gets better, it gets more light on it. And that means that your overall level gets better. Not so with weapons. Weapons don't carry uh, an affixed light stat. Okay. So I can, I can have 100,000 ascendant energy to upgrade my weapons. It really wouldn't help me out all that much. Because you wouldn't be able to unlock because I wouldn't Because I would not be increasing my, I wouldn't be increasing my levels. And so what you have is that, that, um, that randomness... When you actually lay it down against any two people, you can have, say, three of us, me uh, and Scott and Squish, who have played pretty much the same amount of time and have played an awful lot together and rarely played without the others for any significant amount of time. And there were there was a period of time when we had massive gaps between us. Seems and there's like a three level gap between uh, or, or very nearly a three-level gap between us right now because of the rate of upgrading your gear. That's entirely limited by how many shards you get. It's a bit much. Like It's, it's, yeah, it's that, very, very frustrating. That seems a bit odd, that, that kind of disparity between people it's, playing at it, playing it the same time. Yeah, certainly. You, you I, would I think there would be more emphasis on the gear upgrade item dropping more than the weapon grade, especially if it's like locking you out of content. Uh, yeah, it is, actually. So they want you to play more. Mm. That's the answer. The answer is to play more. Yeah, it, it just seems like if, say, like Scott got enough to be like, well, I'll go do this raid, and oh. He is, he's he's twenty. He's, he is uh, 29 now. He got, uh, he got lucky with an exotic drop early on, and uh, before they made an alteration to one of the special events that allowed you to get uh, not an unlimited number of, of upgrade materials, but, but a significant number, he, he was able to take advantage of that in a way that the rest of us weren't. Ah, uh, okay. So he got a boost on that, and then beyond that, he just has had better luck. Uh, but there are limits to how many of these things you can get per week. Uh, not super hard limits, but the the bulk that you will have available to you at any given time is kind of fixed. The guarantee is fixed. So it's not look. It's not it's not depressing. Uh, it's not infuriating. It is merely frustrating. It is merely very very frustrating. Um, which is and that's where, that's where I find myself right now. I'm thinking about you said a weekly limit. Tell me these things you well answer. not 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 strictly to the upgrade materials okay the upgrade materials can you can find them on your own right, right. Uh, you know you could just you can come across you can do a special event and it's like hey here's a random reward have one of these or you can get a random reward in PvP or a random reward after running a, a uh, one of the the strikes one of the missions or, or the dungeons something like that mm. that can't be relied on that's totally random you might mm. see six of them in a day easily just from random rewards you might see one or two a week as a random reward those cannot be relied on what can be relied on is that if you have an exotic or a legendary piece of gear that you don't want and you uh uh what is it called dismantle everybody's got a different way of describing <laughs> you take it apart reduce it to its component parts you'll get like two or three hmm. um you can, again, never be sure when you're going to get a piece of gear like that. Except that you can buy them with these special currencies. And those currencies have a limit to how many you can have per week. Hmm. So the randomness means that there's always going to be a chance you're going to get some. And the more you play, the more you'll get. But the actual guarantee that you know I can get, say, X number of them a week through dismantling uh, unwanted gear is, is pretty limited. So... It's 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 a randomness mechanic that it, that I think is just slightly out of tune. That's all. I just think it's a little bit out of tune. And for some people, uh, the rate feels good. The rate of their experience and the rate of their gameplay and the rate of their progress feels, you know, maybe slower than they'd like, but but reliable, predictable. I don't know. You probably feel better than I do. You're yeah. level twenty nine. I'm of level twenty seven. I I f and I and I mentioned this too. I mean, we were talking about this, and I told you just like you said. I got. I just got really, really lucky with the way things happened for me. Right. I. I when well, you made the most of that luck, to be fair. Yeah. Back when. Back when. Uh, 
back when your engrams could turn into anything, uh, yeah, yeah. one of my blues turned into a yellow, turned into an exotic. Yeah. Which and that's put what, you, you way know, ahead of everybody And else. it put, yeah, no, and that was And those are enough. way more expensive to upgrade, by the way. Yeah. The better the gear, the more of these things it takes to upgrade. Okay. And so since then, I've just been upgrading every part of that, and that brings my light level up. And, of course, it's been doing that. And this was before they nerfed the, the Queen's Bounty stuff. Uh, whenever you could go on her missions, you'd always get purples, and you could down that was dismantle pretty much guaranteed. whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you always get a purple. Which, which level is purple again? Uh, legendary. legendary. Those are legendary. So yeah. okay. Those are one under exotic. Uh, and you could, you could break those apart and get shards that would help you upgrade your other legendaries or your other exotics. And it's just been it, – I've had the – this was before they did that. And so we ran, I don't know how many missions we ran before they did that, probably nine or so. And every time I'd get something, I'd break it down and turn it into two or three uh, things for me to use to upgrade. And I just kept rolling with it. So I, I just got extremely lucky in, in that event. I got lucky in the sense that there was also the cave going on at the time, too. That's true. And you had better luck at the cave. Yeah, because you <laughs> never got purples at the cave. <laughs> you know, from the cave. and you you actually rerolled the guy. You went and did a you went and made an alt. Uh, who's Not only, long after the I yeah. I went and made an alt because at the point at which I started getting uh, decent gear drops, they were all for this other class. <laughs> or the other class, I, I would know. get it and be like, "Kaching, here's this awesome gear for a warlock." <laughs> Too bad you're a Titan, and we basically hate Titans. Well, I don't even know why we put him in the game. We can't stand them. <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. I just out of everybody I know who plays it like fairly regularly, I am just I, I am the guy having the worst time, and not even because of the fundamental gameplay, just because it's everything. Like everything's got. A, there's some guy out there who's just who thinks the game is absolutely swell because everything is going his way, and then there's me. At the other end. And, and we define the extremes. We define the edge cases of what the game actually is. <laughs> what it is is Blizzard knows you're playing, and they're just waiting you know, for the next expansion to come out. That way you could play that instead. I, I would I gladly, it, gladly. They know how they to, don't want you to, they know how to build game, a loot-based so. game. So, and then like, today we tried the PvP. I never want to. I don't want to do that any. I don't want to do that again. We had a great run on that first one, and then they all just went downhill. Out of like that. nine, I know. I can't even remember the first one. The other eight were so bad, and I'm so bad at that game. I am. In the PVE, it, it's fine. You know, I can play like, can learn the predictable nature of that environment, and I can work within what I see as the confines of a game. But I get into like a PvP environment, and I feel like I'm looking through a. Like, I feel like I've got blinders on because of the narrow FOV, which doesn't bother me the rest of the time. And it just, it's, like, it's terrible. I, can't, I feel like I can't see anything. I feel like I'm, I'm turning way too slow. I feel like someone, when I'm on the PC with a mouse and a keyboard, I feel like I can fly okay. in a competitive game. I mean, I really do. I'm not, it's not like I am just inherently bad at these things. I'm older than I was before, and I'm not as good. My reflexes aren't quite as good, but that's because I don't, I don't hone them any longer. But but in a console PvP thing, I don't have whatever that takes. I can't. My brain, my mind, and my muscles still want to work the way they did when I first learned how to do this. Ten years, twelve years before the first decent competitive FPS would ever show up on a console. And it's one thing I've never been able to work past reliably. Once or twice I've had a good time. You know, a couple of the Call of Duties I've done... You know, I've done okay in the competitive side. Not, you know, not great. And I know a lot of it's down to map knowledge and understanding different classes and things like that. And I, and I don't in this game. But s- there's something else there. The controls don't feel good to me. I feel like uh, I feel like my hands are tied off and I feel like I, my movement is very sluggish. I don't like it. Definitely sounds like a personal problem. It is a personal <laughs> problem because I am personally very angry about it. Uh, w- one thing we'll say... Uh, to go back real quick on Shadows of Mordor, that's one thing that was slightly a little off. I mean, I kind of got used you to it. You were playing on a PC, right? Yes. And you were playing mouse mm. and keyboard. No, we switched controller. Oh, you switched to controller. Yes. Okay. I thought you said you were. The field of view at first was a little too close for me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It, it seemed like it got a little better once you got into like the open field and the maps and everything, but at first it just seemed a little too close to me, and you can't adjust that. Um, so you can't, like, cannot, can't, no. cannot. Mm-hmm. That's frustrating. It's really very odd yeah. sometimes to feel a close FOV in a third-person game. Yeah, that's even worse in a lot of ways uh, than, I, than in a first-person. But it did shooter. seem, I think, once it got, I, I'll have to double check. But it seems like once I got into the open field, it kind of backed it out a right. little bit. Um, that maybe, like, yeah, it may, it may totally be the case. 
Uh, and I, I, I do wonder about this because I'm incredible. Like I'm incredibly sensitive to bad FOV. I feel like the, uh, and I know a lot of people maybe aren't, um, without even real, like without trying to be ageist at all. I think there are an enormous number of people who have spent the majority of their time playing video games now in the last, say, 15 years since consoles became the incredibly dominant platform they are. Since it became totally viable to have a first-person shooter, a competitive first-person shooter on the consoles. This was such an alien thing to me that all of my understanding about how to be in control of a first-person game comes from the PC. And all of my understanding about it, all of my neuromuscular attunement, all of my expectation, everything, it, it comes from a, a time long before this was the standard. And I have never been able to conform, like, psychologically to that standard. I can't do it. I don't understand how you can play a game competitively where you have an, such a... a, a where you're so shackled in your movement, where your turn rate is going to be so limited and, and fixed with a maximum upper limit, uh, where someone can, can be standing right next to you and you can't see them. Like, I don't... It's terrible. It's, it feels very bad to me. And, and I know that that sounds an awful lot like cover for something that I'm just terrible at. Uh, but it is just part of the reason why I am terrible at it. I am also terrible for the other reasons uh, that I don't have an innate understanding of the counters for all of the different classes. Mm -hmm. And I haven't quite learned exactly what to expect from everything and, and how to, uh, premeditate, you know, get, given a map and, and the location of the objectives and all this other stuff. Uh, but also I just don't, I don't like what they've got tuned here. I just don't like their multiplayer, you know, even in, there are some games like when, when you're playing multiplayer and a certain map pops, you're, you, something inside of you lights up and you're like, ah, oh, this is my, <laughs> this is my map. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. I know what I do on this map. I know it works for me and it's good and I feel good and I like this place and I like what I can do here had a and good, it's fun. Had a couple of those in the old, uh, in that first Modern Warfare. Uh, had a couple of those maps. Yeah. That I had. Um, um, the Battlefield games, mostly the older ones, had this Bad Company 1 and 2. Just I had real like maps that are full of sweet spots. I only remember one, one map from Day of Defeat. Really? Yeah, I only remember uh, one map from that. I remember all maps. From yeah, I, I spent know. a lot of time playing. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I can only remember one though. But uh, yeah, I mentioned to do the raid um, for Destiny, and uh, because it's there, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's there, and because you got a number, you're one number off mm -hmm. from being at maximum, and you can't do it without raid gear. I know, I know. <laughs> and I'm not really itching because I want the raid gear. I think I'm just itching because I've done everything else in that game, and it's like there's the one thing that I haven't done yet. Um, we've done we we've done the weeklies. We've done the nightfall. Uh, we can do those now. And um, I would like to do them without cheesing them. Yeah, I know. You are a huge fan of cheese. I am a big fan of cheese, and I don't like it. I think cheesing the last one, like finding some gimmick in the map that lets you do it. You're not cheating exactly, but you're sort of <laughs> you're not following. You, it's uh. There's always some kind of shortcut of some way. It some is. Map, it's some, uh, hi some special hiding place. It some is a special very quirk in every map. Uh, letter of the law, but not spirit of the law kind of thing. Mm. Uh, yeah. and, I d and I don't like it because I don't want to have to do that. You know, I like a stand up fight. Mm -hmm. I don't like, because what if they plug your cheese hole? Right? Right. And then what are you going to do? You never learn how to play it for real. And you got a whole legion of people who don't know how to play it for real. It's, did you learn how to do it right the first time? I've never heard that saying. What? <laughs> you ever heard of plugging the cheese hole? I have not. Wow. <laughs> You're young. Plug, plug in the cheese hole. <laughs> That's a 90s thing. Sorry. <laughs> it isn't really, but whatever. No, nah, we're just, we're just, it was just... Maybe I just made that up. Yeah. I don't know. There's literally a hole like that Scott likes to stand in in everything that we've done. Every sort of cheese mechanic has Scott sitting in a hole, and so that's his cheese hole. Yeah. There was one for that. For, there was one we're for shooting the through a cheese hole. I had, to shoot, I had to shoot through a cheese hole, and then the other one was hiding in a cheese hole and shooting out of it. So one was shooting right. into one to get to the boss, and then the other one was just standing under the boss, basically, and shooting out of it to get to him, and, you know, no damage whatsoever. But, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how we got through it. should take you through there. Um, I'm game. Yeah, exactly. Trip through the cheese hole. Yeah, take a trip through the cheese hole, exactly. Yeah. Sounds like a different show entirely. <laughs> so. Um, New with, podcast. 
Uh, oh, did you see the? Did you see the? Like, well, of course you saw this, but that whole—I don't know how he got that bug to work. Where he saw the map that showed all the other. Yeah. Locations oh, we're talking open? about like the unfinished content. Yeah, yeah, yeah the uh, expansion yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know how that happened or how he did that to make it happen, but sure enough, there he was. He went to all the different maps, and you could see all the different new locations that they had plotted on there. Yeah, and, uh, I think I read this. Bungie new, said, new "Yeah, locations? that that is the." Some of the what? DLC stuff. <laughs> new locations? Well, <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. Right. But <laughs> new places and old locations. Right. Yeah, and they did They did confirm that those were actual DLC locations, just that the info wasn't final yet on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I oh, mean, is, is, that the, is that where we're going with? I mean, you can yeah, go kill one of his bosses. I mean, that was, that, that was you know, possible. Oh, was that in the leak? I, I don't really want to, because unless he drops purples and... Uh, he doesn't drop anything. Well... I mean, he was even be there. You, you could glitch to him in the beta. Yeah. Everything was question marks, but and, but mm-hmm. people now have gone to him and killed him. He's I mean, that's that I I really don't have a huge problem with that. I, I don't, mean, that's I don't, nothing new. I don't mind. No, it isn't. I, no. World of Warcraft was defined by that for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, that that's that's okay, and I don't I don't want to lay it on too thick with the idea that I'm particularly angry about cut content. That's you know, whatever. The, we've we've known about it. We've suspected there are things that we we imagined. There are things that we know for certain. Doesn't really matter how they how in particular they handle it going forward is is of great importance. It's gonna it's gonna make the difference between catering to a shrinking but you know maybe stable player base and uh, actually making up for for some of the reported problems of the game and growing that player base and and maybe having player retention or having people come back. I mean, I'm on the fence right now about, do I keep it? I bought it on a plastic disc, which is rare for me. Mm-hmm. Did um, your, uh, something else that you were looking forward to was a, was a, was an update to, um, oh God, the thing you mm-hmm. backed on Kickstarter, Elite Dangerous. Was it that so it was supposed to happen this week? Something You're going to ask me with that with like 90 seconds to go in the hour? <laughs> That's What's wrong why. with you? <laughs> hey, you're awful. Yeah, to- we, you, you've totally never, ever talked about Elite Dangerous for an entire segment. Not once on this show. It's wrong ever. that I'm alone in that game, by the way. <laughs> it's wrong. You all I have no clue what it is. I'll have to look it up. Well, it's great. It's f- and we're going to talk about it after the interview. All right. Well, <laughs> speaking of the interview, we're going to go to a break now. Uh, when we come back, we will have uh, the interview with Frogwares uh, that is coming up uh, I- after this break here. Uh, and we'll be back with more in game chat in just a minute. I believe this is from Witcher 2. This is called Assassins of Kings. We'll be right back. And welcome back to in-game chat. Currently, you're listening to this at about a seven o'clock on a Saturday. However, right now it is about four fifteen in the morning on Thursday uh, for me and for our guest. It's about uh, noonish uh, where she's at. We are talking with Olga Rushko, and I really hope I did my best to uh, pronounce that correctly. She helped me a little earlier. But uh, we're talking with her. She is associate producer at Frogwares and for Sherlock Holmes, Crimes and Punishment. Olga, thank you so much for uh, being with us this morning. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, Congratulations on the game. I have seen very, very good reviews for this. Uh, They released on Tuesday, and uh, I've seen a lot of great... I've, I've pretty much shared the experience that most reviewers have, have written about uh, with the game. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It is true. Indeed, we released on Tuesday. So that's the second day that the game is already live for most of the players. And we are happy with how the, both players and, um, and the press and the journalists have uh, accepted the game. We are really, really happy and proud 
it's uh it's it's received very well and uh i i I know that i had sent you some questions earlier because uh you wanted to have some time to go over them so i want to jump into those and i don't want to really steer away from those but forgive me i if if anything about our show we can go off on tangents and 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 other (laughs) ways in a conversation that we never intended to so uh, i'm going to try not to do that with you um thank you but uh but yeah congratulations on the release of the game it's it's doing fantastic i have enjoyed it immensely um and i've enjoyed it uh for the fact that it's that it's done a lot of things differently uh from the previous sherlock games and we're going to go in and get into that in in just a little a little bit but let's start with uh you telling us about crimes and punishment it's a sherlock holmes game of course uh and that goes a long way in telling someone what the game is but beyond that uh, how would you describe it well uh indeed sherlock holmes game called crimes and punishments that's our biggest that's our most ambitious game that we've made progress as a studio is already 14 years old and that's our biggest project and again well very well uh accepted by everyone so that's the game that we released on tuesday we released it on pc we released it on xbox one on ps4 on ps3 and um, xbox 360 so again that's that was the huge work for us to do five platforms worldwide and um, the game feature shell comes you know the the greatest detective who never lived and um, uh, the game is very different from everything we've we've done before. So the game is split like you know into six cases, six short stories, six investigations, similar to the adventures to the stories written by C. O. Sakon and Doyle. So you are playing as Sherlock Holmes, you are playing the sleuth, and you're investigating on different uh, cases like murders, disappearances, so on and so forth. Only, I mean, different mysteries. That's your job to find, um, to perform the investigation, you know, mm-hmm. to find all the clues, uh, to question all the suspects, all the witnesses. And the fun part is that every case investigating, you have a number of suspects, like three to four of them. And it's your job, um, as of the detective, to find who is the one, who is the criminal, who is the culprit, who did it, right? And with this game, we as the developer, we are not helping the players. Uh, we are not directing them in the right, you know, or, or into the wrong direction. So it's entirely your investigation. You have the complete freedom here. And on top of that, you're also able to choose once you are confident, once you are 100% confident that you know the culprit, you're also able to choose how to deal with this information, whether you want to condemn or whether you want to absolve uh, the culprit, whether you understand their reasons uh, behind um, what happened or not. Uh, So there's the moral choice for you also to do. And again, we're not helping the players. We're not really saying if the players were right or wrong. We just accept their decision and we move on to the next investigation. Yeah, I was. Uh, that kind of uh, goes into the next question of what's different from this game as compared to the previous Sherlock uh, uh, titles that you guys have done. With the um, with the sense that uh, first off, it's split into six cases. I think previous titles had this one over uh, overarching case of uh, of a story uh, throughout the entire game, whereas this one is split up almost almost episodic. Uh, in a sense that um, you have each each case is individual and set on its own uh, and is its own thing, which uh, which is really really nice. I really enjoy the fact that it does that because it lets me sit down, do a case, take a break, come back, sit down, do another case that's completely unrelated to the one before it, um, and I really I really like that aspect of it. Plus, there is the moral choice. Uh, uh-huh. At the end, that I don't think we ever had in any of the previous titles as well, where you 
there is a there is a right or wrong answer. There is a you know uh, the way you go about it and the decision that you make at the end as to far as far as who's the who the guilty party is. There is a right or wrong, but the moral choice is left ambiguous. Uh-huh. You can make your own decision there, and there is no you've made the wrong decision as far as the moral choice is concerned. Exactly. I, yeah. So there there is no like you know black and white. And right. We're not going to judge. Uh, your 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 moral dilemmas or your moral decisions that's entirely on you as the player yeah and you give and you give the player every opportunity to say look you can stick with this answer or you can change it if you want you give them multiple opportunities to uh to to make that choice uh or to to stick with that decision i should say um and and you also give them the option to see what the right answer is as far as the the uh, the end result before you make that moral choice. Um, again, uh, very. This is great as as far as freedom to the player uh, to make those decisions and to stick with those decisions as well. So uh, I, I'm I'm grateful for that, and uh, I'm glad that you guys put that in the game as well. Uh, this is the eighth game in the Sherlock series for Frog Wars. How many of those have you worked on? Actually, that's the seventh game. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, um, and that's the the second Sherlock Holmes game for me at Frogwest. Okay, so you worked on Testament, I believe? Yes, that was the Testament of Sherlock Holmes, and now that's Crimes and Punishment. Yeah. Is there a particular aspect of these titles that draw you to them? The genius. The, the genius of Sherlock Holmes um, himself. You know, I mean, um, with Crimes and Punishments, that's... Um, our biggest aim with the game was to make um, you as a player really feel that you are Sherlock Holmes. With the previous, with the previous games and with the previous titles, sure thing, we were trying to accomplish this. But it um, never really worked the way that we wanted it to work, you know? And uh, you've been playing Sherlock Holmes, but you've been playing aside him, like following the detective. Now we wanted to give you this this feeling of being Sherlock Holmes, of making all those decisions on your own. So we, we are giving you all his talents, his skills, but you are the one um, to decide how to properly uh, use them. That's probably the main reason why we decided to move to the cases, uh, to several investigations inside of one game compared to the previous games that we used to have like one big story to investigate inside. And this um, right or false um, uh, conclusions or solutions, they're better played in the in the number of cases rather than uh, making some decisions that will finally influence the, the very end of the game. What does it take to develop a game like Crimes and Punishment? And I know that's a huge question. Uh, <laughs> so to be more specific, h- how does that start? The uh, aspects of the crime or the setting? Uh, what starts the whole process uh, to developing a game like this? That's a really, really huge one. Uh, so um, uh, one of the biggest aspects of um, Sherlock Holmes games is um, the story. So the game is very huge on narration, um, and probably we're starting with this. From um, the time it takes, you know, to have the idea on the game and to finally start working on it and to finally have the game being released, it takes years. So if we speak about crimes and punishments, we spent almost three years to develop the game. But um, of course, the idea we've been cherishing the idea of of the game like long before we started with the production mm. so yes that's uh, one aspect of um, of storytelling of what exactly we want to say and how exactly we are going to say that then goes the technical means if we are able to to, to achieve this or to accomplish this and then there goes like the talented team with Crimes and Punishments, we had 50 and uh, fifty guys involved into the production. And sometimes we speak, you know, like of 80 people. Uh, and that's it. <laughs> so there goes the story, the technology, 
our skills, our experience, talented people involved. And here we go. Yeah. Uh, how did the idea of letting the player make their own choices come about? Did that, is that, was obviously that's a, that's a driving factor in the, in the game itself, but was that something that started at the very beginning of development for Crimes and Punishment? Is like, this is what we want to set out to do for this particular version of Sherlock? Well, well, well yes, actually, yes. That's, um, that's the choices, the ability to make, to, to decide on your own. That's probably the biggest intention we had, like, uh, again, feeling being Sherlock Holmes. You have all his talents, you have all his skills, you have all his means, you have his genius, but it's you to decide uh, to decide what's going on further, how to uh, how to investigate, how to leave uh, the Sherlock Holmes game, uh, the Sherlock Holmes life. I'm sorry. Uh, what's the uh, what's the influences? Uh, what are the influences for your Sherlock? come from is it just strictly from the books or did you take any of it from the uh from films or tv series that have been broadcast over the years everything <laughs> everything there's you know not, not not one single answer that the idea so inspiration is coming from so yes definitely the books definitely the novels that were written over 100 years ago and yes we are like we are very big fans of uh, sir conan doyle and with actually with every game that we're making we've been honoring the canon of Sherlock Holmes these are those novels written by Sir Conan Doyle and of course of course we are watching all the movies both old ones and the new ones mm -hmm. and the TV series and we're waiting for the new episodes for the new series to arrive yeah everybody else is too I agree <laughs> yes. and then there's a lot of fan fiction uh, devoted to Sherlock Holmes, we've been reading a lot of them, maybe a little bit, some kind drawn by some, you know, uh, fans, and those are written by some rather professional authors. We've been like reading everything that we can find about Sherlock Holmes, we're into it. And the, the good thing with, um, with the new movies and with new series arriving, that they help us see the detective from, you know, some kind of another side. We've been working with uh, Sherlock Holmes universe for 14 years already. So every time you can see the, the, the new aspects of that, that's really, really helpful. Yeah, and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised that the games have, have not necessarily influence on that, but uh, the games are just another aspect of, of that whole universe of, of, of Sherlock Holmes to see another side of it where you can obviously put yourself in those shoes and, and, and make those deci decisions and, and, and do those investigations. At the beginning of the game, there is a dedication for the Heavenly Hundred. Could you explain that to people who might not be familiar what that is? Well, sure. Uh, the, it's not the question that I um, actually hear very, very often. It's probably the second time, but I'm glad you asked. So this Heavenly Hundred, the Ukrainian Heavenly Hundred, that's the people. Um, no, it's not like that. So when we're working on the game, uh, we had some some kind of unrest you right. know, that, that you're, started you're, in, in Kiev, in, in Ukraine. Right. You're, I was going to say, you're based in, uh, in the Ukraine. Yes, so. Exactly. And we're based here in Kiev. So we've been um, the witnesses and sometimes participants of the events. So, I mean, it started like, you know, like some kind of unrest, but it turned out into revolution and it influenced many of us. And... Um, this heavenly hundred that's the people who um, who actually killed uh, in the in the main square of the city mm -hmm. which is like you know four metro stations from us so that's our dedication if you want to or our tribute to what happened this winter in in our city how how does how does how does going through something like that and i didn't i didn't have this this written down in your your pre questions um but how does how does going through something like that what how does that affect development of a game how does that affect your uh, maybe even your mental state uh to even want to come in and 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 work on a video game amidst everything it's, that's going on uh, it's horrible 
actually. I mean, making the video game that's um, video games that somehow uh, that's an entertainment, right? Right. Yeah. So every morning you are coming, you are coming to the office and uh, you are working on the entertainment, on some luxury actually entertainment. While that's really, really uh, horrible or terrible or difficult to do that when you face death, right? Yeah. So the the events they didn't actually influence the development itself because we've been already on the finishing, you know, on the finishing line of the development. But it did influence people involved into it. The mental state, if you, uh, uh, the way that you, that you name it. Mm -hmm. So that was really, really difficult because you, you are not sure about tomorrow. You don't know if there is any tomorrow, but you still continue doing what, what you're supposed to do. What, um, outside of, uh, outside of, of game development, um, on a personal level, uh, for you, what, how do you how do you keep coming how do you, how do you go to work <laughs> uh how do you go to work in the in the middle of all that what what gets you to say all right i have to i have to get up and i have to i have to get out of bed and i have to go into work and i have to do this mm -hmm. uh when all of this is going on what how what drives you to do that i <laughs> i have a hard time answering that well you know when when the the um, the peak of the events i mean not, not even during the peaks, but like through the entire winter, end of autumn and entire winter, mm -hmm. the first thing that you do when you wake up in the morning, be it four in the morning or seven in the morning, uh, the first thing you, you do, you're, um, you're checking Facebook, you're checking news, you're checking Twitter, you're checking the news. And the last thing that you're doing when going to bed, you're doing the same, you're checking news. So yes, it was very, very difficult. Yes, we had few days we were not showing up in the office at all at the very, very peaks of the unrest. But most of the time we've been coming to the office. Most of the day, of course, we've been dedicating to the, to the events, discussing the news and discussing how we can, how personally we can, we can help people who are there whether we want to join them, wh whether we want to uh, to bring them something that they need or require. And how did, how did you guys, how did, how did you guys help uh, with that? In different ways, in different ways. Yeah. Uh, we had some of the team members um, uh, spending days and sometimes nights there who, or just hours, you know, a lot of people were coming there after, after the business, like business hours just to spend, you know, the evening there. Uh, we've been, we've been gathering some food and some, you know, warm things because uh, winter in Kiev is rather, is rather cold. So everything that we could, we, we could do, we, we did. Uh, I, um, I think it's, I think it's fascinating and I don't want to sound morbid in that way. I, I just think it's, um, I think it's an aspect of, of, uh, maybe game development, maybe even just personal life. I think that yeah. uh, that no so one. You, you know that that was the 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 idea of putting this um, this splash screen at the beginning of the game. That's what we lived. Uh, that's what we felt. That's what we experienced while um, uh, working on the game, and that's why we decided to put it inside of the game. You can see it only when starting the new game, and we actually. We took this decision all together, so we even have uh, we we even had some kind of anonymous voting inside of the company, uh, and we 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 decided that we should do it. And I'm glad you did. Uh, I think it. I think it. Uh, I think it brings to light to people who may not be aware of it, or who may not be aware of the details of of. Uh, they may know what's going on, but they may not be aware of what the Heavenly Hundred is. They may not, and and it may it may spark interest in that for them to research that and look into it, and then become educated about uh, what was going on over there and what is going on over there, and and what it means to the fact that you're playing a game that was developed during 
or at least was wrapping up development during all of this uh, and that people had lives to go on about uh, with during during all of this as well. Uh, I was saying that I don't think it's something that really gets uh, a lot of coverage sometimes is Mm -hmm. the environment with which. Uh, a development studio has to work within um, political, be it political, be it be it uh, social or anything like that. And and I think it's fascinating uh, to hear uh, of of what you guys have gone through um, and and how you dealt with that in 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 making a, a video game. So uh, my congratulations and my um, my respect to you and and the rest of your team for for pulling through through something like this. And uh, also for, for, for helping out those around you. So uh, I think that's wonderful. Um, now, I know a, a development of a game, uh, to get off of that serious topic for a moment, development of a game usually takes up all of your time, free or otherwise. But uh, if, have you had a chance to play anything else? Yes. What have you, yes, what have you been playing? Well, different, different games. Both video games and uh, table games. Like, you know. Oh, tabletops. Yeah. I pitch- so yes, we actually we um, we're working on the new Call of Cthulhu game. That's um, that's the game that we plan to base on this actual uh, tabletop uh, RPG game. So that's what we are playing here during our lunch time. Uh, when we are not uh, busy playing Call of Cthulhu, there's also the entire library of Steam games available. So there's it's very very um, various, you know. There's a number of different games to to play. The the last one I've been playing that's Julia, the new adventure game that was made only by two people, two guys with with, um, with a very tiny budget, but that's the very fantastic game. And it's called Julia. Julia, oh, okay. Julia among the stars. Oh, okay. And uh, what else? There's a number of uh, shooters, sure thing to play. <laughs> so. A lot of blockbusters and a lot of indies and this and that. So yes, there's there's a lot of games to to enjoy. Meanwhile, working on Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Well, what's next for you guys? I mean, is it or, or is it the uh, uh, is it more Sherlock or what? What's next for what's next for you? Well, you know, the one that I'm allowed to speak for the moment that's Call of Cthulhu. Right. I'm not I'm not really allowed to speak a lot about the game. <laughs> until the marketing department says it's time okay but so the next one that we're working on is this call of Cthulhu going to be again some kind of investigation game because we see we we find that Lovecraftian stories they they feed this investigation pretty well you know his main idea you are like you are very you're a small one you're a very little one and you're trying to understand what's going on around so we believe that investigation should feel here um, should should fit here. Of course, there's going to be a lot of horror. So, like I mean, horror investigation game, mm-hmm. and that's it. That's it. There is um, there is something more in development, but I'm not able to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't but talk about it. I understand. I, yes, my leads are sealed. I understand. I understand completely. Well, Olga, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, being on the show with us and, and, and giving your time with us um, uh, during the development of this other game. And uh, we appreciate you uh, being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting. Thank you for having me. Thanks for playing Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. Uh, love it very much. Thank you so much. And, and congratulations again on the game. Uh, we'll be right back with more in game chat in just a moment.
And welcome back to In-Game Chat. That was music from Scott Pilgrim. Uh, last section of the show here, uh, we're going to talk about, well, we're going to talk about Elite Dangerous. Give James his time to talk about that. And uh, also... Well, more than my 90 seconds. Well, yeah. And uh, also some changes that came about through, it was Twitch and, was it something? Steam. Steam, Steam yeah. Curators yeah, that's particular. right. Uh, go ahead and talk about Elite Dangerous, though. Uh, new, new. Well, one of the yeah, one of the things I was talking about last week that I was really, really looking forward to is that they uh, they had moved into their uh, full beta number two, mm-hmm. which it, whatever. I mean, it they had uh, it gone into their non premium beta, the beta that just about anybody could buy into for a lower price, and they've been sitting in that for a couple of months. And it's good. It's wonderful. It is one of the handful of you know, space sim, space combat games, uh, space environment games uh, that are seeing a resurgence. And last week, they moved into uh, their second beta phase, which added an enormous amount of content, sort of further fleshed out and built the world uh, a little more into the picture that they've been selling for a while now. And it's interesting. Uh, Elite is very, very interesting because, and I believe I have said this before, uh, it is it is necessarily because of the way gamers are, the way people in games industry are. It's sort of cast against Star Citizen, right? Star Citizen is like flashy, amazing, overpowered. Like Star Citizen is is, is like Ivan Drago from Rocky IV, and like Elite Dangerous is like Rocky. You know, he's like smaller, poorer. Like, rougher around the edges, older, uh, doesn't have nearly as much money or flash or, or glitz or glamour or representation or hype. Star Citizen is your Sopranos and uh, uh, Elite Dangerous is your wire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, and I make not necessarily... One gets all the acclaim, yeah, yeah, the, other the other far one is far better. <laughs> yeah, he's just doing all the stuff. And, uh, but their development models are totally, totally different. Yeah. Uh, so Star Citizen is out there promising you that your that your gigabucks are absolutely going to make all your dreams come true. Everything is going to be great. Don't worry about it. Right now, you can just sort of tool around in this little puddle, and you can look at your ship and uh, I've, I've, give us more money. I think I read it is now the officially recognized by Guinness as the most crowdfunded thing ever. Most heavily crowdfunded yeah. thing ever? I would believe it at, what, Like, not just game, but, like, plus? anything. Yeah. 55 million now? I think something like that. Well north of 50. Uh, but anyway, they have a totally different type of development model where they're doing all of these modules, but they're kind of developing them simultaneously. So you don't have a core game onto which you keep receiving updates over time. You know, every month, like, here's, like, this new thing. And it's more like every three or four months... Here's maybe a new thing, mm-hmm. right? They had the arena commander stuff where you could just sort of do enemy wave fighting and then a little bit of dog fighting type stuff. And then now I think they have uh, some sort of air races that you can participate in, which again are limited. But it is a different development cycle, which means that the delivery of the actual game is a lot different. Elite uh, actually provides you with a limited but fully playable everything, right? There is combat against players. There is combat against NPCs. There is faster than light travel from between star systems. There is the actual scale of those systems represented. Uh, there is trade. There are bounties. There are stations. All of the core elements of the game are there. And then when they release an update, they flesh them out. They build onto them. They expand the size of the universe. They add in more complicated uh, as well as more subtle systems. The difference is that... You put your money into Elite Dangerous, and every so often you really are getting playable content back out of it. Uh, Star Citizen obviously being a different type of thing. You are are buying based an awful lot on trust. Um, but at the moment, for what I guess most games are reaching for, Elite is currently the by far the most playable, the most complete, the most perfect, the best representation of space combat space flight and space environment that you can get out of something new. Everything else is, you know, will be along later, right? Thank you very much for funding us, but, but right. we'll have something playable at some point yeah. in time in the future. Uh, but uh, they released their, their second beta thing. The game has just become incredibly, incredibly interesting. 
I just haven't had much of a chance to play it because every single day has identified new fixes, new updates, new changes and modifications to it. So they've just been, you know, patch 201, 202, 203, 204, pretty much every single day. So mm -hmm. watching it shake out without actually getting in there and getting my hands on it personally. But they've also already announced their, their third beta push, which will be at the end of this month. So they're moving very, very fast. And for people that Sounded don't want to, yeah, yeah they, for people who don't really want to invest money into a beta product, they're still online for or on track rather for a, a full retail release. I, you know, I don't know for sure that that's going to happen, but they're the progress rate is tangible, it's playable, and it's verifiable at this point. I think there's a very, very good chance that whatever they've identified as launch as retail, uh, that's going to happen this year. And it's going to be, you know, 50 bucks, typical mm -hmm. game price. So yeah. I'm just suggesting that if you care at all about flying spaceships, that you look at Elite. It's a much smaller thing than Star Citizen in a lot of respects, uh, but much bigger in others. You, uh, you brought something up uh, earlier this week. You asked me a question if I was going to get the Master Chief Collection uh, yeah, for Xbox I've One. Had, I've had, like, the weirdest... Maybe this is not weird. I don't know. Maybe somebody else has had this, but playing Destiny, I've really there being like so many weird questions about like what's going on with Bungie, what mm -hmm. kind of has happened to their development philosophy. Like Destiny definitely feels very Halo, but it isn't. Uh, I've kind of had an itch to go back and play through all this. I stuff. have to. I really have. It's weird. It kind of came out of nowhere. I haven't really cared much about it, but. And I mean all of it, even the stuff that I was, eh, you know, mixed on, like Reach and Four. Yeah. I mean, which, yeah, I know. Uh, all the Halos, rather, not just Bungie stuff. But anyway, I, I've really had that desire. But I haven't played, uh, haven't played Halo One since it came out on PC, two thousand three. Mm -hmm. I reckon. I haven't played it since the Xbox days, and then of course when I got it on PC. But I never played through the I never played through the campaign on that. I bought that and played the multiplayer because I had already done the main, the campaign uh, right, right. on on Xbox. I played two. Uh, I did not play a co op. I played it on the 360 backward compatible, and it wasn't very good. Mm. Actually, the backward compatibility was kind of rotten to me. And we all played three together, which was great. Yeah, played Reach and ODST together. We sort of flamed out on four you know we were like really interested in doing that and that being one of the last things we it did was together so staggered like it was so, yeah because i got it and i played a little bit of it and i said well i'm not going to play anymore because well, james gets this because this is going to be fun playing co-op on this mm -hmm. and then by the time you got around to getting it uh I, it just never it never fell into place that we played together uh and 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 then the new consoles were releasing at the same time so uh it was just it just never happened so yeah uh, it'll be something that i think yeah, I think I want to do that. It'll be something to play on my Xbox One. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it'll also be... It'll be something to play on your other Xbox One, too. Right. <laughs> yeah, it will. And, uh, but I, I really felt like that would be a fun thing to do. And I, I didn't play the anniversary editions of either of, uh, like, one I know. or two. You, yeah. You know, be so that would be really fun to do. Some nice stuff. Two looks fantastic from what I've seen of the of the, of the the screens on it. Um, so, yeah. What is When is that? Nate, <laughs> no, no, he's on November it. sometime. I want to say it's November, uh, early November, but it may it may be Dragon Age November. You know, it may be it may be. Uh, Please don't say the eighteenth. <laughs> just like it may be that November. If it's the eighteenth, just don't say it. The eleventh, November eleventh. That ain't really a whole lot better. <laughs> that's not really one week. Lot, that's not a whole lot better. One week for all that's not, the that's Halo. Not a whole lot, that's not a whole lot Gee, better. Gee, this sounds like it's going to turn up just like Halo 4 did for us, whereas yeah. we're not going to have a chance to co-op together. That, okay, the 11th, Master Chief Collection. The 13th, uh, Warlords of Draenor. The 18th, Far Cry 4. The 18th, Dragon Age Inquisition. I don't so two days. earn that kind of money. Two days. Wow. Much two less earn that kind of time. Yeah. I'm not, like, what am I made of? Time? I'm not a Time Lord. I don't have a TARDIS. I need a TARDIS to handle that week in November. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how to handle that. It's certainly something that I would like to do, but maybe that, maybe that has to get pushed off somewhere else. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, I was able to take care of Draenor a long time ago, but the rest of that stuff, mm -hmm. I, got, I got no clue, my friend. I got no clue how to do that. <laughs> I mean, you're talking next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are we, like, we going to do? Maybe. <laughs> that's how it'll. That's how it'll. That's how it'll wind up for us. And which 
hate it all the time when it happens. And you're gonna still be playing Destiny hardcore, you know? So I, I doubt I'll be playing it hardcore, but <laughs> I, I uh, might be looking at coming back to it, depending on what they do with the DLC. Say, I, I caught that wind of sarcasm you threw in your right. tone, or soft core, yeah. or any core, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I don't even have to. There's so much else going on that week. I really don't. I really don't like that week. It's a rough oh. month. It is a rough month. Uh, the other thing that we mentioned earlier uh, during this break was that Steam now requires disclosure if you're curation, maybe. Yeah, in, any Steam curators uh, that are promoting content, they have to make it. They have to note that hey, we're being paid by X, or you know, we we are promoting this on behalf of whatever company it is. A- any any kind of deal they have in place, they have to say, you know, we're putting this up because we're sponsored by X and. That, that's that's pretty much it. Is like otherwise. You well, know, I mean, it's, it's a fairly common it's a fairly common occurrence. Uh, Total Biscuit recently pointed out a lot of people talked about it, but it was recently pointed out uh, with respect to Shadows of Mordor, mm-hmm. is that uh, not the developer? Obviously, we know they don't handle this, but whatever PR firm was uh, distributing playable PC code for reviews or quick looks had said, "Hey, you you can have this right now. You can totally have this, but it's got to be a." Uh, Brand deal. Uh, a brand deal. Where basically uh, there are certain restrictions. And, and usually among those restrictions is uh, you don't say bad stuff about the game. We're not going to tell you what to say. Just uh, don't say negative things. Don't say bad things. And that's, you know, I, I understand why that's very enticing because you have to, you have to weigh uh, your integrity, should you have any, against early access, which is very important. Mm-hmm. Early access is directly related to the performance of you as a critic or as a, as a showpiece or something like that. Um, if you don't have it, then you don't have it, and that's all there is to it. Uh, but this is actually a fairly common thing. It's not rampant, but it's mm-hmm. common. Uh, and I think a lot of these outlets are, are seeing which way the wind is blowing and knowing that this isn't something that you want to... There's nothing... Look, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you do. Uh, but you have to be open about it. You need to be very clear that this is what you're doing. So if you are if you are in yeah, a brand good. deal or if you are in a, a, a cross promotional deal or something mm-hmm. like that, you just just disclose it. That's all we're asking for is disclosure. Yeah, just some transparency because yeah, or even translucency. Yeah, <laughs> anything. Just say like, hey, I'm 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 paid to play this. I was paid by the guys, or they gave it to me, or whatever. Which now applies, of course, with uh, with Twitch now too, right? Uh, there is a. Uh, thing about that it is only for anything twitch is promoting themselves they are like going to like earmark particularly this is sponsored by somebody mm. not that's not just a broad-based thing they do they do say uh well, on that'd their be blog, almost impossible to do wouldn't yeah they, they, they do they do Couldn't say that, that uh you're supposed to follow ftc guidelines re- regarding uh anything sponsored but there it's not something they're like actually seeking to do for everything but anything mm-hmm. they are promoting any uh channels they're like putting up on the front page or uh promoting via their email uh newsletter they will have it marked as sponsored so that it's not a all encompassing thing like right. some people thought at the beginning they'd say no this is only for things we I mean that certainly that there. certainly makes a bit of sense since they host so much content yeah because we it would be we talked about this when they broke it's like how would they even have system cover because we thought it was like at first all right things on twitch yeah that would be really 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 impossible to police but yeah. uh they're just acting above board right yeah and I mean, there's well, no real it, problem this also because uh hey we got bought by amazon yeah We'd, we'd like to act like grown-ups now. Thank you very much. We like making money. Amazon would like us to act like grown-ups now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dennis, what's on your list for next week? Uh, probably some more Guess Isaac. Guess what? Yes. Because <laughs> I enjoy Isaac. It is fun. And, and no, that's not a Rebirth. problem, man. It's coming I, out soon. I'm never giving you crap because it's because it's repetitive and you do it over and over again. I play pinball. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just a fun game to play. Over and over, every, every time it's a bit different because it's yeah. all procedurally generated. Well, I mean, and well, I, to to go, uh, a, not a step further, but to sidestep I, the fact that I play pinball, I play Destiny. Guess what I do in that all the time? Yeah. <laughs> over and over and over. Uh, so that's on your list, RJ. What have you got going for you next week? You went to Atlanta. You were here with us last week. You went to Atlanta. Yeah, last week I went to uh, Anime Weekend Atlanta. It's 20th year anniversary, 2014. See anything mm-hmm. gaming out there? Somebody in the chat room asked if you were excited about Mortal Kombat X. 
I don't know that that was there. I doubt it. But. No, it wasn't, it wasn't there. But uh, in terms of Mortal Kombat X, uh, the only gripe I got about it right now is that they added those uh, uh, things from Injustice, the background interaction, which was uh, almost kind of broke, to my opinion, just kind of kind of broke the conflict. I mean, all you got to do is throw a few rocks or throw a few cars at somebody, and uh, that, that could turn the match around in a heartbeat. Mm. But um, mm. <clears throat> that's just my opinion on it. But I didn't see it there. But uh I'm gonna see how how much of an impact that has on the game. I'm I'm excited for the game itself. Just want to see how much of an impact the background animation is gonna have in there. Um, video game wise, uh, probably plot some more stuff from the Dreamcast. Start playing some more of that stuff. Uh, now that I thought about it, I said I played Daytona USA earlier. I'm wondering why Daytona USA 2 hasn't made an appearance on a console yet. Oh really? Now that I think about it, I never I never I never realized. Was it was it just an arcade game? And it's just an arcade game right now. But I'm thinking this has been a while. Why is it not showed up on a console yet? But that's that's for something else later. Um, gonna try to finish off Five Nights at Freddy's, and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, over to Nate. Uh, hopefully, I plan to play some Destiny tonight. Just with the uh, work and school, I've been barely able to play as much mm-hmm. as you guys. <laughs> A um, little behind on that, um, but uh, then um, probably play some uh, Shadows, uh, get some more of that down, and um, other than that, nothing that I can think of. Okay, oh, the, oh, actually, Drive Club, I will be playing that. That's I, right, it's I October. I definitely want to try that out. And I posted on our Facebook that you guys should go check out the Games for Gold and the uh, the um, PS Plus games. Definitely check out those links, and don't forget your, get your games. But uh, yeah, I want to play that. That looks fun. Graphics look really good. Just Are you in the uh, PS Plus is great or PS Plus is crap camp this month? Um, I always find I always find it really really fascinating. What are the games this month? To, what are, what are they? Uh, Drive Club is Drive Club does not count. By no, the way. it doesn't. Drive, Drive Club uh, PS Plus edition does not count against the normal six. Uh, but it's uh. Yeah, bring up, up the list. I can't. I, I can't am. actually get it from memory. I can't either. But I don't. I, I. I don't remember. Horde. No, I don't think so. Is it? I. I don't think so. It's a, a, a Spelunky on PS4. Right. Yeah. Which mm. isn't technically on Vita, but it is on Vita. Yes, it is. If it's on PS4. And what else? Yeah, bring that up. It, we'll talk about it in a minute. But I just I yeah. always find it interesting because people are like, ah, it's, it's terrible. Where's my AAA PS4 game or whatever? Right. Yeah. Where's my Ground Zeroes, where's my Assassin's Creed Black Flag, whatever, I don't know. Where, where's that stuff? And I, eh, I don't know, it's amazing. Every month I get like six games. Um, I have no complaints. Drive Club's course, uh, Arkham Asylum. Uh, uh, for PS3. Yeah, Dungeons & Dragons, Chronicle of Mystara, and also Rain- for PS3. Rainbow Moon. Rainbow Moon I don't know anything about. Yeah, I don't know That's anything only three about of them, though. Uh, so and then for a PS4, it's Dust, uh, Splunky. Uh, an Elysian tail. That's an Elysian. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yes. And Anime then, um, yeah, that's right. My bad. And then uh, PS Vita is Pix the Cat. Which is kind of cool. Little puzzle game Pac Man ish. Oh, thing. okay. Yeah, it's neat. Look at it. Um, I logged in there earlier. The other one. I logged in there, I think, on Friday. Or, or maybe it was Thursday. Because it was 1st of October or something like that. Close to it. And I logged in to see if it, the games were up. And they had not. They had not switched those over to the to the new stuff yet, so it wasn't up when I looked at it. It probably is up by now, but I'm going to say that was Friday or Thursday when I did that. So, and what was the other one for PS Vita? Uh, is it Rainbow Moon? Yeah, maybe Rainbow that was Moon. Rainbow Moon. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm in the camp of PS Plus is great and fantastic. I I've never had any. I mean, even if they post games that aren't necessarily my style. Yeah. I mean, it's still games that I'll try just for the heck of it, because you know sometimes I might end up liking it. So yeah. I mean. To me, I don't ever complain. It's free, you know, technically ish. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I'm, for, I'm for always certain values to, are free. Yeah. But although the amount the game costs that you get over the year, it technically yeah. does become. I think it's no, it's perfectly fine. It's yeah. totally, it's more than a wash in our favor. I think it's always great. I just think there there have to be people out there who just who are the kind of people who never touch the thing they're not interested in. You know, they they don't. They're just like, I want this. I know what I want. Well, Where is it in my PS4? Close-minded. Yeah. Kind of. I and mean, it just seems upsetting because it's like, I, I know, you got PS Plus because you absolutely want to play online and you want good free games, but you don't care for any of what's on offer. Yeah. For me, I just look at it as... I mean, honestly, I, this is this is fantastic. You know, I would have never played Hotline Miami if it was not free oh, sure. on the Vita. I didn't. I, right. I heard of it, never thought anything of it. And I, I mean, I never would have... Honestly, I would never would have bought it. Um, and then now that I played it, I mean, I'm totally gonna buy the second one because the first one was so much fun. It was so hard. Mm-hmm. 
At least it was hard for me. I mean, it took me forever to beat it. And, I mean, that was a great game. Love the music. Um, so, I mean, to me, just getting that game was enough to justify it. And I loved that game. Yeah. So. Looking forward to that. That kind of adds to the confusion of what to do next week. But Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that would come out. Well, you know, next week is uh, Alien Isolation. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> like, what in the world is going on? Tune in next week to find out. <laughs> no, I mean, with those reviews. I like. Know. So random. No, it's it's a five. It's terrible because of the way it is. No, it's a nine because of the way it is. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I mean, I like I get it. I get it. There's there's a Ripley. There's an alien. There's some environments. Uh, I I don't like. I get it. I still, after watching all the reviews, after reading yeah. what's written by people who have played the game, I still can't get past the idea. That it seems like a four-hour game, like a five-hour type mm. of game, you know? That whatever tension they're trying to bring to bear on that type of game, in those environments, that type of gameplay, uh, those things. Like uh, a relatively or, or mostly unarmed person against an overwhelming force. You just have to be sort of clever and intentional with how you yeah. approach the situation. Like, I get where that tension comes from, but I just... Man, I don't know. I don't know about stretching that across even 10 or 12 hours. And some of what I've read in the reviews seem to indicate that, yeah, that's really all they've done is they've just stretched it. They've taken a good idea that should fill X amount of time and, you know, sort of smeared it out over, like, 5X that amount of time. Taking a good idea that could have been a mode of gameplay, like a, like yeah. a, a, like a you know, uh, like a challenge mode, challenge aspect or something. Yeah. And made it a full fledged sh- ten some odd hour game uh, when it really could have fit into a l- last this long challenge mode type situation. Yeah. Or maybe that's what it is. It's a last this long challenge mode situation, but they stretched it completely. Uh, right. That just seems. Well, I, it just seems unfortunate. It I, I will like say, with the reviews, you know, it's funny looking at the link I posted. There's almost just as many bad as there is as good. As there are it's good, like yeah. So, it's like, what? It's very <laughs> weird, and I understand reviewer slant, and I've sort of looked at some of the bad reviews and you read You just don't get reviewer slant very much, though. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. I mean, everybody can, everybody's got their own yeah. like, favorite enemies, like their own favorite outlets to hate. But a lot of times, if you look at the score and you read what they have to say, this guy over here and this guy over here are approaching the idea, uh, li- like the, the weird unpredictability or the irrationality of the alien AI, to this guy... It represents a wonderful challenge. To this guy, it represents tedium. And they they weigh it differently. And it makes it really hard for me to look at it and still come out the other side knowing, or, but what what is it really? What is this really? Uh, I don't... I, I know that it's not something that I can spend that kind of money on. It just doesn't, doesn't look right. Yeah. Curious what Matt thinks if he's seeing some of these reviews... Since he it doesn't matter. It. it doesn't matter. <laughs> He's you over the moon about it. He you bought Colonial Marines. That That's in a lockbox. <laughs> His love for stuff he's already spent money on is in a in an impenetrable vault <laughs> inside of his heart. Like you can't get to it and and cannot be changed or modified or, or in any way violated. It is just what it is. He is happy with his purchase. He doesn't even know if he is, but he already is. Yeah. It doesn't matter. So <laughs> I, it looks a little, it looks fine. It certainly doesn't look like a tragedy, but and it looks like visually looks. Ah, oh, it's great. God, it looks perfect. I haven't seen anybody capture the essence of that era of design. Like so, it looks so good. Yeah. It looks so much like the 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 Ridley Scott film. It feels like it should be very very good. Be a great uh, games with gold or PS Plus free game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Be a great Steam sale. <laughs> yeah, yes, it would. It'd be both of those things, wouldn't it? So. Hey, the holiday, the Halloween sale. Does Steam do a Halloween sale? Yeah, they. they yeah, I heard some the other day. They're going to do a Halloween sale. I didn't know Come that. On. I knew they always did a like a fall sale, like mm-hmm. in between that, and then they did their their winter sale. But I didn't know they were doing uh, a Halloween sale. I mean, it makes sense. As popular as zombie and stuff are. Yeah, yeah you've got a library that can uh, that can deal with it. So might as well. 
Anyway, thanks everybody for joining us in the chat room as well as everyone listening on uh, the stream and on the radio as well. Thanks to everybody who grabs us each week from iTunes or however you get our show for later use. We really appreciate it. Go to ingamechat.net. You can join us on Twitter, Facebook, and our forums at colonyofgamers.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're on Steam, we've got a Steam group that you can join up with over there and play games with us and other listeners. And we've also got a clan in Destiny, if that's your thing. For however uh, long that lasts. For however long that will last. There's a clan in Destiny uh, for in-game chat. Join us. We'll, do, we'll cheese a few things uh, <laughs> if you're playing with me. And, Join uh, us in the cheese hole. Right, exactly. <laughs> anyway, have a great week, everyone. We will see you next Saturday. We're going to talk to somebody from Farsight Studios, the makers of Pinball Arcade, about their Adams Family Table Kickstarter that they're working on, plus uh, everything else that's going on with Pinball, Pinball, Pinball. We'll see you next week. Have a good one.